one thing you've done is join Highway 1. And Brady had a line he used somewhere about um, our goal is to de-risk hardware. I like that line a lot because hardware is considered risky. It's actually considered hard. It's something that I always tell people when they make a mistake in doing hardware for the first time. It's like, yeah, hardware is hard. But that's kind of a naive way to look at it because it's not like software is easy. It's not like all the software startups succeed and hardware is a hard one. The thing about hardware is that it's expensive. Right. If you make a mistake, it is expensive to fix. If you need to build units, it is expensive to build units. If you want to distribute units, it's expensive to distribute units. And so mistakes are expensive. You've got to fix that inventory, call it back from the store, pay somebody to take apart the box and put in the cable you left out, whatever. It is not that it is harder than software. It's that it's more expensive than software. And as a business that has a limited amount of cash, mistakes become riskier. They are more damaging than they are in the software business. And the idea of de-risking hardware, I think, is the right way to think about it. How do we minimize the financial risk of what we're doing so that we can achieve our goals? Now, sitting on high, my advice would be don't do a hardware company. Don't be a hardware company. <laughs> because it's risky, and you're trying to avoid risk. Now, I'm saying that in part to be provocative uh, because there's huge opportunities in hardware. And some of us, myself included, just think that products are cool and I want to make things. I mean, the thing that motivates me is the idea of something I've built I can see in your hand. And when I walk around an office building and see a mouse, or I walk down the street and see a video camera, or I go into somebody's home and see a router that I built, that's just what, that's why I do this. But look back at what we did with Flip. Do you flip, join the movement, watch some videos? We were not a video camera company. We did not invent any technology. We did not build a chipset. We did not do R&D, right? We were a branding product sales company that came up with a vision that we sold to consumers. Did we have to build hardware to do that? Yes, we did. But I want you to think of your hardware as a necessary evil. What is the benefit you are bringing to your consumers? And the fact that you have to build something to do that means it's more expensive than it ought to be. The fact that you have to ship something to make that happen, that's unfortunate but necessary. But think about what the benefit is that you're bringing your consumers, because that's the only thing that you've got going for you. Hardware, anybody else can do it. But the benefit to the consumer is a unique proposition, because theoretically, at least, the thing you're building is the only way to deliver that benefit. At Flip, I was telling the story earlier about how we'd been around pure, as pure digital for several years before we became Flip. That gave us deep industry knowledge. Right, we'd been to the camera retailers for four years, banging on their doors, saying, sell our product. We were involved in the technology. Right, we saw, I mean, the reason that we did a video camera is that for the first time ever, the DSPs that we used to build still cameras were capable of video compression. You could not do it a year before. Right, the first time you could have a chip at a reasonable cost point that did SD quality video compression on battery power was the year that we did the first flip video camera. And the first year that flash memory got cheap enough <coughs> that you could build a video camera based on flash rather than on tape was the year that we did the flip video camera. We couldn't have done it a year before. And had we waited two years, somebody else probably would have done it. But we were there in place with those technologies, and so we had that knowledge. And we had a deep understanding of the consumer, because we spent four years talking to consumers about why they take pictures and why they share pictures and what makes them want to pay money for a product, a benefit, a service. And we realized, you know, we encapsulated this, shoot anything, share everything. Right? Video cameras used to be these expensive things that dad brought out on the weekend to videotape the birthday party, and then took the tape and put it in the closet. You never saw it again. That's what video was. But we were there, you know, at the same time as flash memory and DSP, things like YouTube came along. For the first time ever, shoot anything and share it with everybody really easily. That benefit was never possible before, and that's what we as a company helped to deliver. We enabled that with our hardware. And so we built this entire ecosystem of investors and component suppliers and manufacturers and retailers, all to deliver that benefit, right? Nobody really needed another video camera. And all the other video camera companies that came along tried to sell their video cameras based upon megapixels and, and uh, resolution and battery life. And we didn't do any of that, right? We were gonna help you share your memories and use our services, use our products, use the things that we've built to help you do that. That, I, I truly believe, is what made us successful. It's what differentiated us from all the hardware companies that were making hardware for the purpose of selling hardware. Nobody wants hardware. I don't need 
things. Right? I buy things for a reason. What is the reason that someone's going to buy what you're building? How do you deliver that? Focus on your vision. It's hard, very hard, by the way, to find a vision slide on the internet. It's not just really cheesy. It's the best I could do. Your vision is what enables you to reach scale. Right? It's not because you're sitting in a garage designing a hardware product. That's not why you're going to be successful. Your vision is what allows you to align yourselves internally. It allows you to get investment by aligning your investors with you. It's what allows you to find your customers who wants what you're offering. It allows you to find your, as you grow, to align your development team to let's all build the same thing as opposed to wander off in our different directions. It allows your suppliers. All of this is how you get to be from zero to a billion. In most people, there's this like, this like vision of, uh, not vision, there's, a, there's an image of what your vision is. I'm going to be a billion dollar company, my charts are up and to the right, consumers love my stuff. You do it to raise money, and then you hire a marketing team to brand it. That's true. That is all true, and if you guys are going to be successful at scale, you're going to do that. But it is not enough. Right? Vision and the communication of that vision is what allows you to find partnerships in your supply chain, in your, op in your retail chain in all the different operational aspects of a company that you want to build to be successful. Because that's how you get to that scale thing again, right? Foxconn is better at supply chain than you will ever be. Samsung is better at manufacturing than you will ever be. Apple is better at engineering than you will ever be. If you're trying to say, I'm going to build a better product than Apple, that is a wrong strategy, right? Because they have 10,000 people, they've been working for 30 years with a billion dollars, and you can't compete against that. Right, so be smart about it, jujitsu about it. Right? What are you good at and what do you have that's different from them? At Flip, we realized that we had agility. Like the one thing we had going for us, we had an idea, but everyone started copying that six months later. But could we innovate faster? Could we deliver faster? Could we just do things differently than the industry had before? And it was those differences that allowed us to be successful. We didn't do big television ads. I've just got one more slide and I'll answer that question. We didn't do big television advertising because we went through social media. We were the first to really capitalize on having our own website where we could sell things at full price and capture that margin rather than sell only through distribution and retail. Right? Can you figure out what is different about the service, the benefit, the offering you're bringing to consumers that allows you to offer that in a way that does not compete head to head with these people already at scale? And can you assemble that team that allows you to compete as close to scale as you can because you still, it's going to be hard and you need that scale anyway. And how you balance those two things is what's going to either make you successful or not. Right? Because fundamentally, you guys need to be visionaries. You're not supposed to be here to be hardware engineers building a gadget. Right? You're here to build companies. And your company will be successful because you see something that I don't and that Apple doesn't and Samsung doesn't. And you see an opportunity that, for whatever reason, nobody else is going after yet. Figure out how to deliver on that and just bring the hardware along with you as you need to.